Uh, on the track tonight, uh, Oscar Pistorius, who we were just talking about, and the man who beat him in the 200 metres, Alan Oliveira, are both back in action for the 100 metres T44 heat. As is one of Paralympics GB's rising stars, 19 year old Johnny Peacock. The teenager smashed Pistorius' 100 metres world record in July, and he's hotly tipped for gold in this event. When I was five, I had meningitis, uh, meningococcal septicemia, and that's a form of blood poisoning, which um, basically killed off my foot. I had to amputate um, and put me in a coma to fight it off. That's how I lost my leg. Boring story, it's not quite as good as a shark attack. Unfortunately, I, I really wish I had a, a wicked story like some of the guys on the team. <laughs> yeah, Johnny Peacock, I have a baloney amputee on my right side. Uh, I do the T44 100 metres. My goals was always just to get into London, to be honest, you know, just to represent Team GB at home Paralympics, you know. Um, you don't get that opportunity, you know, that's a once in a lifetime opportunity. That was always my goal. I just want to go out there, execute a race well, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. You know, obviously, hopefully get into the final first and then take it from there. Once you get into the final, anything is possible. But, you know, there's going to be a few quick guys in that race, it's not going to be easy. Ultimately, it's Oscar the one that's uh, had the gold in Beijing. He's the one who's trying to retain that title. It's Jerome Singleton, who's the last. World Championship gold medalist. It's these guys who have got the pressure, really, not me. You know, I'm just a newcomer. Yeah, I just did it. Obviously, um, running a world record doesn't really help with not having pressure. But um, ultimately, you know, I expect Oscar to come in with something special. You know, he always does. I won't chat to him as someone on the line because <laughs> I won't put him off this time because he might, might not like me for that. But, um, but yeah, you know, he is a huge star and he obviously I will be in awe of him. But ultimately, you need to forget the names that you're racing against. You know, these are just competitors at the end of the day. They're no different than any other competitor you did. The only difference is they might have run a bit quicker. You know, as long as I just sit there and think, you know, yeah, he's Oscar Pistorius, but he's just another athlete at the end of the day. That's what it is, you know. Take it like that and then it was beatable. Absolute shambles. Uh, now, for part three of our special feature following Doronya Mulverhill as she learns to use running blades, encountering all of the medical, psychological and practical issues that any disabled athlete has to face. Doronya grew up in Ashbourne near Dublin and she's travelled back to see her parents ahead of a visit to a prosthetist Donna Fisher. She's already had casts taken of her legs and today she's going to try on the new sockets which will enable her to wear running blades. I am kind of nervous. It's sort of like going back to the first step now, mm -hmm. trying out something that I've never done before. Donna's going to come out with them and I'm just going to have to get up and, and stand on them. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Well, she doesn't know if I'll actually be able to stand, but um, she just wants to make sure that they fit right. Age 16, Doronya contracted meningitis. Within hours of getting ill, she was in intensive care, suffering organ failure and close to death. She pulled through, but the illness left her with gangrene in all of her limbs. And threatening her life once again, her legs and fingers had to be amputated. But when you guys heard that I, they were going to have to take my legs. Did you ever imagine that I'd be running again? No, to be quite honest, yes, but we did feel that we were going to make or try our best to ensure that you did have as good a life as you possibly could have. I have an appointment with Donna in Kappa Hospital, and Donna is the person I've been going to for the last 11 years since I've been getting prosthetic limbs. It's a big thing. Well, I just thought, right, that's it, I'm never going to run. And now the chance has finally come. I don't know if I want to anymore. It feels a bit, it's, it's pressure, but it's, it's exciting, it's a good thing. Now, Dronya. Wow, here we are. So, these are very your blades. Aren't they? I'll let you hold that one. They're not so, that heavy, actually. No, they're, they're very light. It's yeah. all carbon fibre, so the whole limb will be relatively light. This leg is always the one that... Um, yeah, you've just got a little sore bit there on yeah. the head, so, OK. But hopefully these new sockets will be a bit more comfortable for you, so... The blades are held on by a vacuum created between the liner, an inner sock and the socket. A sleeve over the top holds things in place. Doronya has no fingers, so she'll always need help with putting on her blades. Do you know what they feel like? They feel like skis. <laughs> OK. Doronya prepares to stand on the blades for the first time. OK. Take it easy, cos they are slippy, so... Oh, Good girl. That's it. Perfect. Brilliant. That's great. Wow. Now, so as I say, just nice and handy, just standing, OK? Maybe you could bring... God, your... I really am tall. I know, I know. <laughs> you've, you've grown so much since I saw you last. <laughs> 
If you just keep your feet a little bit further apart, and I know you probably don't know quite where you are in space there, so just keep them a little bit further apart. That's good. So just nice and straight. Because what I want to do is to go back like exactly, that. Exactly, okay, exactly. So, so to what you straight. have to do is you have to just try and find your centre of gravity. So try and keep them as straight as you can and try and get your balance, OK? It's impossible for you to stand still in these. <laughs> I can't, I can't walk without knocking into No, you're okay. And that's a rotation, you know? Oh, yeah, so if I leave my leg out like that... Exactly. Okay, Dronia, we'll just take a break there for a second. I just want, wonder, can you pinpoint any areas where you feel pressure within the sockets? Can you tell me? Yeah, definitely. What you feel? Along the top of the right leg, especially. On the edge of this one? Okay. Yeah, around the bone. Okay. Um, at the back of this one. Right. A little bit at the edge here as right. well. Okay. And then both of them, it's just kind of like pins and needles. Okay. Like tingling. Okay. The blades go back to the workshop to be adjusted according to Deronya's feedback. Yeah, that's excellent, Ronya. Really good. But I have to say, I wasn't sure how far we would get today, but to just have seen you walking up and down in the bars, I think is fantastic. I want to like fast forward to the next stage and just be ready to, to go running on it just to see how I go. The whole time when I started I was saying I can't wait to just feel the wind like running. It's just incredible because you see people running on blades at kind of elite level but to watch the process... Don't think about to get how you get there in the first place yeah. at all. Uh, at the same time tomorrow you can catch Deronia's first attempt at running out doors. Earned it. But first, all week we've been following the progress of Deronia Mulverhill as she learns to run on blades. Today she meets fellow amputee and personal trainer Gemma Trotter to do some crucial gym work. Here's how it went. Hi Gemma. Hi. How are, how are you? you? You are right? Well, thank how are you. you doing? You look really well. Do you want to come and take a seat and we can yeah. have a chat about a few things? Right. Look at this big bag around oh, me. Yeah, <laughs> looks very heavy. Actually. It is, it's got my running blades in it actually. Oh right, okay. Great yeah. stuff. So tell me about yourself. Well, I used to be a, a runner. I used to do a lot of long distance cross country running. Okay. Um, and I lost my legs when I was 16. I had meningitis. Right. And okay. since I have never done any running before. Wow, okay. Actually, I've never done any exercise before. Okay. I equally had to start from completely nothing. Um, about 10 years ago, I started at the gym, but I didn't actually have a leg at all. Um, I was waiting to have surgery so that I could have a new prosthetic leg you've got both your knees which is a really good thing um, so we've got loads to work with just get you nice and warmed up to start with okay um, and then after about sort of five seven minutes of warm-up then we can sort of start working harder. five seven minutes because <laughs> I have a cut on my kneecap at the moment right okay. um, if, yeah. when it hurts then I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm walking with a limb yeah do you know because you're kind of overcompensating yeah because you, you're constantly aware of every step Two minute mark, I'm going okay. to up it a level and then I want you to work against that but keeping your cadence between 60 and 80. So I've burned six oh, really? calories. <laughs> wow, it's about a crumb of a biscuit. I feel tired right now. Yeah, but anything that really gets you out of breath, that's what will make the improvement. So then when you put your blades on, it's going to be that you've got such high cardiovascular strength. This is like trunk stability, this is for your core strength, but actually the added part of it is you have lots of small muscles around your hips. Yeah, you can feel. You can really feel it there, yeah. and that's the bit that you need to be really stable. Mm -hmm. When you're bringing your blades through, you need to have all of them Working. really firing up, yeah. Okay. Before I tried doing a squat, I didn't know I could do it. And I think that's the fear of most amputees. They think a squat is going to be very difficult to do. So I would have thought you needed ankles to balance in a squat. We'll, we'll have to we'll see. Right. We'll okay. have to see, <laughs> see how it goes. Right, so lean backwards. So that should be in the small of your back. Okay. And what I find, you really need to just make sure that you're kind of all in line, everything looks straight, and then just really slowly come down as far as you can. And then back up again. There's your squat. <laughs> Done it. 
I'd love to see you on your blades. I think they are going to be the best tool to actually get you fit enough to run on them. Hopefully next time you see me, I'll be toned and on the blades, hopefully I next time. I look forward time. to it. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. You too. Thank you very Take much for your time. See you soon. Bye. And Doronya is here with us now. Doronya, what was the whole experience like? Um, it was interesting. I think the reason I decided to do it is because, as I, I presume I said in the piece, I used to be a runner, uh, lost my limbs when I was 16 and never ran again. And it was something that I always said, gosh, someday I'd love to try out these blades and it just never happened. So I'm delighted that I actually went for it and tried it out, but it was harder than I thought. Yeah, what were the things you had to overcome? Um, pain. They're quite sore. I think that's something people don't realise. When they see the likes of maybe Oscar Pistorius or Johnny Peacock, Johnny Peacock actually had meningitis the same as I did, so I don't know if he has scars, but a lot of people who had meningitis have scars and the skin is just more, um, it's weaker. Mm. So when you're wearing them legs, they're rock hard mm. and it hurts. So I think people need to do so much training. Like they said to me, um, that I just need to get fit and your core muscles need... You know, it's one thing being fit, as in walking around and doing everyday things, and it's another thing actually running on, on running blades. Mm. So I need to move to the next level if I want to continue the process, definitely. Uh, and do you want to continue? I mean, I know you're working very hard over the games. <laughs> probably not the time to do it. Um, but have you sort of thought about whether you might, you know, enter a race at some point? Um, Entering a race seems so far off because right now what I'd love to do is actually be able to run on them. I think you might have seen yesterday I, I tried a few little steps. It was a little more jog. a semi-jog <laughs> than anything else. But what, what I've said is Paralympic Games, I'm going to put that big blue bag that you saw me yanking around away. And then after the Games, I might take it out again and try. Because I met Heinrich Poppel from Germany the other day. And he was saying to me that if he goes three days without his blade, he needs to almost start from scratch again. Because it's just so different. It's not a usual sensation. Like when you lose a leg and you get a prosthetic walking leg, you can just walk. And that was something that I was really worried about beforehand. I was thinking, how am I going to walk? I always walk before. How will I I walk now but it's not too difficult it feels quite natural where the running blade feels so unnatural yeah. it really does you get up on it and you feel wow I, I feel like I may run now because they're bouncy but it's not natural at all no and hard hard work mm. Ronnie, thanks very much for doing you. that good luck when you eventually start yeah, going on them again to it. yeah Thank I'm you. putting money on you for Rio Just so you know <laughs> no pressure <laughs> for 800 meters Following that, young British sprinter Johnny Peacock strutted his stuff in qualifying yesterday for the T44 100 metres final. What a way to arrive and make your Paralympic debut with a Paralympic record. Peacock will face his hero Oscar Pistorius in that final tonight. Not sure you have to. We'll have more from the kids tomorrow at the same time. Now there's a small event in the Olympic Stadium tonight. I cannot wait, but I will wait. Uh, coming up, our own Deronya prepares to run on her new blades. Now, though, for part four of our series on learning to run on blades. Yesterday, we saw Doronya Mulverhill stand on her new legs. Let's see how she gets on trying to run outdoors. Doronya is a double amputee who was a county-level runner before she lost her legs and fingers to meningitis aged 16. Ever since then, she's used prosthetic legs, but they're rigid and heavy, so no good for athletics. Today, using blades, she's going to try to run for the first time in 12 years. Her new set of running blades have spent three days being adjusted and finished by specialist technicians. The prosthetics are ready to head outdoors, but is Doronya. Oh! You're okay, you're okay. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that was close. I'm so tall I can't lean down towards I know, to open the, the doors, yeah. I'll just walk around here. 
Will I go to do a jog from here yeah, to the chair? Yeah, just going to say, yeah, if we just go around that way, OK? That's it. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, oh. You OK? Ah, uh, no. OK, 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 OK. It was right there. OK, yeah. Uh. So what would have caused that? It's probably just whatever way you, when you took your little step, you just probably tweaked a little muscle. How are you feeling now after this morning? It's all right. Like, I got a bit of a shock, to be honest, when I felt With the, the pain. pain. Yeah. It yeah. was like almost like a screwdriver digging into my knee. And I think that just shows that we have to do a bit of training. So today's yeah. obviously our first day outside. We just want to give it a try and let you have a feeling of what it's like running outside. And then I think the next steps, if we want to continue this, will be to do a little bit of strengthening up. OK. okay. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm going to need help. Feel good? <laughs> OK, I'm going to go on one side. Thank you're you. on the other side, OK? And okay. just, you're going to just walk oh. with us, OK? OK. Now, it's uneven here, Dranya, so, so you I'm hold on to me. So I'm my hands on your shoulders? Yeah, whatever's okay. most comfortable for you, OK? And then we'll let you get your balance, OK? How are you Ow. doing? OK? You all right? Yeah. The muscle that was sore before is quite sore still. Is it? Are you up for a little jog along there? I don't know. OK, well, I'm going to be beside you. What's and you're a jog? On the other. That's perfect, yeah, that's it. That's perfect. And you just stop whenever you feel you want to stop, stop. OK? Again. <laughs> think about your core. <laughs> OK? I'm sorry. I don't think I can take the pressure of actually running on okay. that knee. All right, well, that's fine. I'll do, like, a pretend stride. <laughs> that's excellent. Oh, God. Well done. Well done. Fair oh. play to you. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> you all right? I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, well Thank done. You. It's brilliant. You did all that on your Aww. own there. Like, you didn't need me at all. No, that's, well, I wouldn't have been brilliant. able to do it if For you... a first time. Like, it's just fantastic. Are you OK? I'm yeah. all right. It was great to just have that feeling of, you know... It's just this feeling when you run, I think that other people just take it for granted yeah. because you don't even you don't need think to think about, about it. it. Exactly. But exactly. I've just been walking or sitting for the best part yeah. of you ten years. You have actually moved in that no. way. And now, you know, there you are. It's brilliant. Yeah. It's really good. Well done. It's the first step. The first step. <laughs> exactly.